Okay, so let's of course start with the uh, Dream Griever album that was published last month. Uh, now you've seen the reviews, or at least some of them, and uh, so what are your own feelings and thoughts on the album now that it's out? Um, I'm excited about it. I'm glad that we finally got to release it into the world, and I'm thankful for all the kind words that have been given to us. I'm just glad, you know, people are out there and they're listening to it. It's exciting. Yeah, uh, what are your own thoughts on the album? How uh, um, uh, how happy are you with the end result? Good, yeah. I think, you know, the producer we worked with is amazing. I love working with Pete at World Famous Studios. And, you know, we all worked really hard on this record and we're really happy with the outcome. You know, I got to push myself vocally in a couple different directions than I had previously. And we all got to create something that we've been working hard on. Yeah, this is of course also the debut album of uh, Bleak Heart. So how is it to publish uh, such an important album in a times like this? It's good. It's good to have something like to keep you busy and not necessarily distracted, but just to have something positive in your life right now. Because, you know, it's hard for everybody everywhere and things are definitely strange. So it's nice to at least feel like I've been able to kind of get some work done on things that I love to do. Uh, how much did the current situation actually affect this album? Did it affect the writing or recording or? No, we actually recorded this like right before everything hit the fan. So we recorded in, I want to say late February. And so Pete ended up mixing and mastering the album right at the beginning of quarantine. So in April, so we had a lot of time to work on it. And it just, it took us longer to kind of figure out what we wanted to do with it, you know, what label we might want to work with. The kind of post um, album recording things took a little bit longer, but I'm thankful that we got to record it before everything happened because it would have been really tricky if not. Okay, uh, the themes are actually pretty heavy and well fitting to the current time actually. So where did the inspirations for the music and the lyrics come from? They just kind of come from just personal thoughts of just the human mind and how strange it is and how we kind of get ourselves into various rabbit holes that are actually more damaging to us. I think the human psyche is really interesting to me. So I think this album more so just represents a fascination of that, like how we, I don't know, how our anger consumes us and how we put so much energy into petty conflicts when really time is so fleeting. and. So it's just kind of a psychology around all of that. Which I think I, does fit into COVID a little bit, you know, because it's a time where we're all home and isolated and getting into our heads a little bit, you know. Absolutely. Uh, you list a lot of uh, influences online, like um, uh, well, indie rock, shoegaze, psych rock, doom metal, goat and dark wave, and so on. So where, does, where do the, all those influences, where do they come from and how are they mixed all together? Um, I mean, I think it's just a lot of, uh, all of our members listen to like different music. We have, we have a lot of like taste. I don't know, there's so much music out there. So we listen to a lot of different styles. You know, JP really wanted to create kind of some music that had some 90s indie rock kind of feel. And then we're also part of the metal scene. So we grew up listening to metal. So that's going to find its way in there. You know, I'm a huge Portishead fan. So I think that shows through my vocal style and Mark was into pop punk that doesn't as much like fall into this band but you know was into post rock and whatnot so i think we are all just able to bring our own personal influences and make something unique out of it okay uh you were actually second to join the band after jp so uh how did it all start for you and bleak heart um well jp initially asked me to just do vocals for him on the demos so I went in just to do some session work on that. And then afterwards he wanted to start a band. And so I was like, yeah, sure. I'm down to start a band and, and start writing. And he found, you know, Mark and Josh, who we had known previously and they were interested. So that's how it all came together. Yeah. How do you like sp split resources between different projects like Dreadnought and Bleak Heart? And if you have any other projects, how do you 
like divide your creativity and time and so on? It's it's unorganized. <laughs> As I think I, I write or I focus on a certain band when I'm just like feeling that sort of style. So, I mean, we all have different practice days and I do have other projects that I'm working on during quarantine too. Just, I just always have to be creating. So if, even if I'm not writing for Bleak Heart at the moment, like I feel like I need to be creating something else. So it'll either go to Bleak Heart or go to a different project. So I kind of, it just depends on what I'm feeling the day and then that's what I'll work on. Okay, uh, well, we are living in very uncertain times at the moment, but like, is there uh, some concrete plans of uh, what Bleak Heart will do next? We do want to tour when we're allowed to, um, <laughs> when things are safe, and we want to play shows again, but we are currently writing and we have, you know, some more songs ready to record, so we'll probably have more material out there shortly. And I know it's hard to say like future plans because you know we're all just sitting here and waiting. <laughs> but we definitely want to play live once things can happen again. And that's probably the next big plan, but we're still discussing kind of what we can do during quarantine. Yeah, yeah. How hard has it been not able to play live? Uh, this it's time. been weird. Yeah, it's been weird. I'm kind of a homebody already. So when this all first started, I, it was actually nice to have a break from having to work on so many things. You know, I, I think I needed to slow down a little bit. So that's maybe a positive thing that came out of this for me is to realize like when I need to slow down and like kind of not not play music for a little bit. But now that it's been going on for so long, um, I definitely miss playing shows. I think the biggest thing I miss is like seeing friends and just the community and being around people, having a good time. I miss a lot of people. Yeah, I've been asking this question from a lot of bands and got uh, very different answers also. So from your point of view, uh, how will this uh, time change music industry? Well, yeah, that's a, it's a good question. I think there's a lot of different ways it could change. I mean, right now, I like tours that were supposed to happen this year, festivals that were supposed to happen this year are now postponed to next year, if they still happen. And so they're already booked up, so if you're band trying to get on the road or trying to get on a festival you know they're already booked so some bands might not even really be able to play until 2022 i think that's the biggest effect is just the live music industry and how that's going to work but people are also going to want live music so there might be more opportunities for people to play because everybody's going to be missing it we're just going to have to see kind of what happens with that um and i think there's going to be a lot of music that comes out i mean this has been a time where people can focus and write. So I think we're going to see a lot more albums next year. Yeah, you mentioned that you miss like uh, being in contact with the local scene. So has there been any effects uh, like that are really felt there locally, like venues or? Uh... Yeah, we've had um, we've had a couple venues close. Luckily, one venue that's um, popular here called Three Kings got bought out by another venue so there's a venue called the oriental and those owners bought that venue which is i'm thankful for because it's really hard to see venues go away uh the zodiac in colorado springs ended up closing and that was a venue that dreadnought played a long time ago because we're all from colorado springs and then um so far those are if i'm missing any i apologize oh skylight closed as well so we are seeing some closings and you know one of my favorite venues the high dive they're not closed yet. I mean, they're they're closing their business for the winter, but they're not done. And it would just break my heart if that happens. It's really hard. So I hope that, you know, I've tried to support venues the way I can, like I've bought some merch, you know, and I hope that the government figures its shit out and can help, you know? 